Hello, everyone. Welcome. We're back with another episode of Poll on the Call. I'm Mandy Mack, and I'm here with Chris Rivers. And today we are talking about poll safety at home, in the studio, and more. <laughs> Everywhere. Yes. Probably the most important thing um, because we are doing a sport where you can get very injured, you could die. Um, and not to like, you know, scare you from doing the thing, but it should really be, always be in the back of your mind, the safety aspect of, um, you know, your space, your, if you're a teacher, your student space, if you're a studio owner, um, all of, of the places where you are. <laughs> I agree with that. One of my biggest regrets when I started five years ago was not focusing on safety. And I've broken a toe, cracked the rib, and dislocated my shoulder and I don't want that to happen to y'all <laughs> yes yeah and I was really like thankful too because like when you first start doing aerials and like pole and everything and you're like I'm so excited and you want to like do it everywhere you're like doing pole on like the street corners on like the stop signs you're doing pole on like construction sites um, but like, yes. maybe you shouldn't do those things. They call um, for amazing pictures. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, while it might be nice, like, you know, like pulling from the trees and stuff like that, um, you could get seriously injured. Um, mm -hmm. and, and also, you like, you're putting on a bad example for other people because they might not know. Um, so, like, while you might be excited to do pole everywhere, um, you got to tone it down. And we're going to talk about safety and ways that you could tone it down and help educate others as well. <laughs> yes. So first, do you want to um, talk about some at, pole, at home poll safety? Yes, all right. So I started at home, which many of you are also in the same boat, or if not, you have a poll at home. I started with a $200 one from Spencer's that was um, not a mountable one. It was a pressure poll. And I broke my first three, <laughs> like in the first two weeks, because I was starting with cast offs and spinning inverts and shit I really shouldn't have been doing. Um, and I didn't really, how do you say, put it up together properly. I didn't know that you need a beam finder in order to find the beam to put it secure. I didn't know that you should kind of look at every angle to make sure that it's not tilted just a centimeter um it was quite a learning experience but i will say i learned and now i have this pole which i've had for two years knocking on some wood <laughs> um so you definitely want to make sure if it comes with instructions read the instructions you want a beam finder you want to find that beam because nothing sucks more than cracking a hole in your ceiling because you didn't find the beam and you really really want to make sure you have tightened it so it's so tight and the pressure is so good that when you grab the top or the bottom you can like really put all your weight and it does not budge it should not budge even a centimeter it might make a little noise but that's okay. <laughs> noises in the home poles happen. But um, do you have anything to add with the home pole safety? Oh, you can do mounted home poles, which is a little bit more money and you to your landlord. But go ahead, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, you touched a little bit about the, you know, getting a safe pole. You want to, you know, if you're getting one from Amazon, you want to make sure that you're getting a safe pole and not just like a knockoff of a print of a brand that is safe um so really read like the reviews and everything um you can also order from a reputable um poll site um we'll list a few at the bottom here and um you know and you like chris said you always just want to make sure that that pole is safe you want to make sure that it has the stud in the ceiling and you're not putting it on just like a random part of your ceiling i've heard so many stories of students putting their poles up in their home and they got it secure and then they take that first spin and it literally like rips their entire ceiling open and it's such a big um expensive damage to fix so you don't want to have that happen to you and um yeah and you want to make sure that your pole space is clear of stuff you don't want to be like whacking into stuff like i'm literally cutting it close here with my <laughs> pole space got a dresser back there, you know, but, um, you know, if you have really long legs, you want to make sure that you are 
um, careful where your legs go, you know, stuff in the ceiling. You don't want to cut yourself open on a light fixture, on a fan or anything like that. Um, and like Chris said, you really want to check your pole every single time you before you use it. Like, and really like shake the shit out of it. You want to like run into it, smash into it because you want that pole to like, if it's going to do something, you want it to happen then and not while you're dancing on it. Um, yeah. Uh, Another thing with the home poles, make sure you take them down. At least I try to tell people twice a month. I know it's an inconvenience and it's a pain in the ass. Sometimes I can't even do it that often because I'm so busy, but at least once a month because it does collect moisture from your sweat, from the atmosphere, it will rust. You need to take all those pieces apart, kind of clean it up, kind of give it love. Because if not, I guarantee you that pole will not last as long as it should. And it will start, how do you say, messing up on you, start sticking in places it shouldn't. It won't go to spin, it won't go to static. So it's so important at least once a month, take it down, take everything apart and just give it a good clean. Yeah, and another thing about um, you know polling at home safely, uh, you might be you know tempted to use your poll at home while you're by yourself, but just think about um, let's say something bad happened and you did get injured and you couldn't get up and now you're alone, um, so maybe just think about having someone there you know in the other room just knowing that you are practicing by yourself. Um, so that they can be there for safety in case you need them. And also, like, if you need a spot, they could be there to help you. They could lift your butt up in the air <laughs> and help you, but, you know, always be safe, too, and, like, um, communicate with your spot. They're not a trained um, pole teacher, so they're not going to exactly know how to help you. But as long as, you know, you trust them and, and you feel safe with them, you can <laughs> use them for safety and, and not try to do things just on your own. And that brings us to crash mats, Chris. Crash mats are fun. Uh, one thing to touch on what Mandy said before we go into crash mats, if you cannot, for whatever reason, have a second person there, maybe call a friend on standby and say, hey, look, I'm about to do pole dancing. I shouldn't be doing anything crazy, but accidents happen. Can you call me in 30 minutes, 45 minutes, make sure I'm okay? They might be like, what the hell? But if they're really a loved one, they will do it and be like, are you okay? <laughs> um, that's not the best alternative, but I mean, I do understand the hassle of being home all day with no one to spot you and you're like, I just want to do this, but you can't. It sucks. <laughs> so now we're going into crash mats. Um, and there's so many different ways you could do this. Uh, I'm going to talk about some ghetto ways that I started before I even learned about the real pole dance crash mats. And that was, I first started using couch cushions, bed pillows, even like inflatable twin size mattresses was, was pretty cool. Like put them on <laughs> around the pole. Um, and then when I didn't have couch pillows, couch cushions or sleeping pillows, I would use laundry. It was all clean laundry. <laughs> clean laundry. But you just put in a pile around your pole really nice. And it's good cushion. Not the best alternative. But sometimes we don't have those couple hundred dollars to spend on crash mats. And with that being said, with my getified crash mats, I'm going to pass it to Mandy. <laughs> You're right. Like, I mean, you know, the, the bottom line is you got to be safe. And it does suck. Like, the the crash mats that are going to save your life are are expensive but you think about your life um it has no price on it so you really want to like value your life and your limbs and your body um so some some crash mats you want to think about getting are you know a crash mat sometimes you might find that at ones that are like one inch and those are really um not really going to save you if you fall um you know substantially you want to look for at least four inch uh crash mat and they could be squishy. Um, I know Lupit Pole has some. I have uh, seen some at yogadirect.com. Um, and of course, Amazon <laughs> has a bunch. But we can, um, you know, any any sort of pole crash mat, um, or you can even get the, the other crash mats that go, you know, on either side and kind of like smush them together so that you have some, some safety. But I really wouldn't recommend um, not having any thing underneath you especially if you are doing inverted things at home you need to have something underneath you because you never never know 
sex. <laughs> Safety first. It's okay to do inverts if you're comfortable with them, if you do them in the studio. But if it's your first time doing it, you should not be doing it at home alone. You should not. I know it sucks. We all want to be like, yeah, I'm going to do it. You probably shouldn't. If it's upside down and you're alone and you have no crash mat, I recommend not doing it. Yeah, and that also brings us to, like, if you're a beginner polar, and this is totally fine for you to be, uh, you know, brand new to pole, you got your safe pole set up. It's it's fine in your space. You have you know six feet of space around. You're definitely not going to whack into anything or hurt yourself. But like now, you don't know what you're doing. The it's not a good idea to just start playing around on the pole. I really really recommend you um, you know if you don't have a studio nearby um, to take lessons. You should find an online class um, just to get those basics down, and also to have another eye looking at you while you do those basics because they're gonna you know find a lot of things. Um, to help you in your pole journey that you might not be able to see on your own. And not to say that you won't find these things on your own. It's just going to take a whole lot longer. So if you want like a shortcut to success, I really recommend, you know, getting an, um, an online trainer um, and having that uh, background at least first before you start playing around on that pole. <laughs> and we offer online classes at Polar Moa, which you'll find a link below. And if you can't take an online class with us, that's okay. We have online videos, which is another story. <laughs> so, uh, anything else about crash mats that you could think of? Um, no, I think that that would be enough about crash mats. And like, like I said, there's different um, thicknesses. So if you wanted the thinner one, if you were doing like handstands or stuff, if you um, don't feel really confident in your handstands, you can get one of those like thicker thinner ones <laughs> like i mean firmer when i say thicker <laughs> the firmer thinner crash mat so that it's um you know not so squishy when you put your hand on it but it will cushion your fall rather than you landing on your hard floor yes yeah. because these home poles aren't high but it still hurts i promise you <laughs> yeah still... yeah and then one other thing i wanted to say about um having your pole at home and and it's so tempting to like invite all of your friends over and like have a good time <laughs> and that's fine but yeah. you're in your home and they are now your responsibility so if people are injured in your home um and they're not really good friends they could literally sue you for getting injured at your home so it's now your responsibility you have this pole in your home you have to educate your friends um on the safety things as well and you can't just like assume that people will know um because you know like i've had people come over and they're like i could see it in their eye they're like backed up and they're gonna take a running jump onto my pole and i'm like no <laughs> like please don't do this you don't know what's gonna happen to your body like you might like slip off you're gonna fly into my wall knock over my stuff um hopefully the pole won't come out of the ceiling <laughs> You know, like, um, it's it's a responsibility having a pole in your home. And, you know, it's not really hard to to stay safe and to, to stay safe-minded when your friends come over, too. With that being said, I know drinking and polling is fun. It's less painful. But be mindful. I am a culprit of this. That's why it came to my mind. And it's important to say drinking is fun. But it definitely gets rid of our inhibitions. And while you're polling, even at home, it should not be happening. I know some of my sexiest routines come out when I've had a little bit. But I try to stay out of the air if I know that I have drank a little. Because it is super important to be safe. Yes. And then um, I just touched a little bit of the street polling. Um, that's like kind of like polling at home. But... Again, you you are a role model to your friends and also to other other pollers, especially when you put that stuff online on Instagram. People will be like, oh, I saw somebody do an Aisha on a tree. I'm going to try it. And then the tree that you pick is like dying and you break the tree and you fall on your head. Like it's not cool um, to show that example, um, you know, you know. <laughs> <laughs> what if you do show it? Because, you know, we, are, we all want to. I know, like, I don't want to be like, don't, like, live your life and have a good time. <laughs> yeah, maybe put a disclaimer, like, do not try this at home. Um, I have experience with this because we can't, 
I mean, we can't really stop you from doing it. But definitely but let like people some beautiful know. pictures have come from it. So like I don't yeah. know. It's so hard. Like you just see something, and you're like, I want to take a picture. And you're like, I know I shouldn't because someone is gonna get hurt. Yeah, so maybe yeah. Just a small disclaimer. <laughs> a disclaimer, yeah. It'd be like I lived after this experience, but you might not. Um, <laughs> that's not so, funny, but like, you know what I mean? <laughs> Um, yeah, so I think I that's all the stuff that I had about <laughs> yeah, all the, the home pool safety. Yes, um, there are uh, I did want to touch upon different poles that you can get in studio. Oh wait, now we're going to studio safety, right? So I guess that's we're going to studio safety. We could talk in studio safety now. <laughs> <laughs> so do you want me to start? I can start this one off. Um, in studio safety, um, all studios should have crash mats. I mean, if you don't have crash mats, you better get them because that is like, I'm pretty sure that's an insurance requirement. Like, that is so important. Um, all studio pose. I was taught that they should all be mounted, but I have learned this is not always the case in some studios. So I don't want to really touch on that. Because I was taught mount it if you're in a studio, but I do understand that can't always be the case. Um, there are different kinds of poles you can buy. Your freestanding stages, which are fun. We have one at the studio, which um, we actually bring other places. But you can, I have seen studios where they spend a bunch of money and they have like five, six, or seven different stage uh, uh, freestanding ones, which is awesome. You can also buy brass poles, which are found in hotter climates. Um, they are better for sticking when you're very sweaty, things like that, and it won't tarnish. We also have stainless steel, which is very common. You'll find it, or chrome, which is more common. I think a lot of the X poles are chrome and that nature. Um, powder coated poles. These are so much fun, but they hurt. <laughs> These are made to be, these are made to do pole dancing in clothes. And you can even coat your home pole. It sucks taking it off, but there's like, you can buy a tape or even a powder coating and it will allow you to pole dance with clothes on, which is fun. Or if you don't want to do that to your pole, you can invest in a silicone pole, which people buy for dancing with clothes on. They don't have to add anything, but be careful with the silicone clothes pole because if you use skin it will burn the living hell out of you because <laughs> it's meant for clothes um so those are the different kinds of poles i mean pole sizes as you know you can get 45 millimeters 40 millimeters i've even worked on 50 millimeters which was a big boy which was fun in some instances but painful in others um the most common is 45 millimeters and yeah that's a little bit about poles different kinds of poles you can have in your studio and now we're gonna dive right back into the safety aspect if you want to take that mandy yeah the, uh, first i wanted to talk about um as a student um you know looking for a studio that's going to be safe because um i don't know if a lot of people know this but literally anyone off the street can open a dance studio. You don't need experience. You just need to <laughs> open the studio. And like, it's happened a lot. Um, even like growing up in dance studios, and I don't wanna like diss my dance instructors or anything, but this is what happened to me. Um, I came from studios where they weren't, you know, the teachers weren't certified. Um, I didn't really get a good dance training. Um, they were maybe more in it for the money and rather than, um, you know, get it, delivering students that would like go off and, and be dancers later in life. So unfortunately there's that um, to look for. So how do you know that you're, you're finding a good studio and they'll probably list, you know, on their website that they have certified instructors. Maybe they'll have their certifications on the wall. You can always feel free to, um, you know, look up your, the instructors that you're taking from and see their bios, read a little bit about their life and their journey and their, um, they're teaching and, you know, finding uh, studios that 
um, put safety in mind and um, are always evolving their education as well. So um, that's something to look for, especially if you're just brand new and you don't know where to start. Um, yeah, just watch out for the people that just open the dance studios. Um, it, maybe it doesn't happen too much in pole, but it definitely like in the dance world growing up, I remember I was like, damn it. As soon as I got to college, I was like, man, I don't know anything. <laughs> I took dance my whole life. Um, but then once you get into the studio, you know, you want to always make sure you locate where the first aid kit is, um, you know, and and also like like where the exits are and everything, um, general studio stuff, um, the crash mats. Yeah. And then... Back on what you said on instructor certified certifications, your instructors, even if not certified, should at least have CPR and first aid, at least. Yeah, that's really good you say that. Um, I know our insurance, uh, Pole in the Wallet, requires all of our instructors to have uh, up-to-date CPR for, and first aid. So, um, yeah, that's definitely something that's important. And hopefully you'll never have to use it, but you definitely need to have, have knowledge of that. Because it, when stuff goes down, you know, the T as the instructor, everyone's looking to you to save the day. So you have to save that day. Um, yeah. Oh, spotting. Uh, let's say let's talk about spotting in classes. So the this thing, um, when I when I first started my um, poll classes in my studio, they the teacher would kind of like show us how to spot our friends, and then we would all help each other. And while that is well and good, it's probably not such a good idea because um, your students are not insured and they don't have the same knowledge in case something goes wrong. So like, let's say your students are spotting each other in class and then um, one of the students gets injured and you know that's on you now that the injury happened and chances are you know the outcome of that is not gonna be very good because you weren't supervising the situation as an instructor. So, um, sorry, I switched over to instructor safety. <laughs> but anyway, I wanted to talk about that because um, only an instructor should be spotting you um, in any situation. And always the instructor should be asking you if you want to be spotted to begin with before they just right away put their hands on you. And the instructor should also, um, you know, kind of tell you where they're going to be spotting you so that you're aware of what's going to happen. And uh, as a student in the spotting situation, you can always, you know, retract that permission during the class at any time um, if you don't feel comfortable anymore. And everyone needs to respect um, this in the, the situations that might arise in the classroom. Um, I'm like going out of order here. Sorry, I went off on a tangent. It just said spotting. And I was like, oh. Um, so yeah, I, I think that's all I had to say about spotting, and that's more for the instructor. So students should not be spotting students in class. Yeah. Yes, I'm so glad you said that. I did, I've never even seen that. That's so crazy. And like Mandy said, you can say no. With that also being said, I, I don't know if this happens to you and other instructors. Sometimes we're so in the moment, we know you said no, but you look like you're about to fall and we just don't want, and we just jump right in. It's not like we just threw it all out the window of no touching you. It, it's just a reaction. Um, I don't know if that happens to you. I know that happens to me. Yes. Yeah. I always like, we don't want you to die. Yeah. <laughs> we don't so, want you to die. Yeah. So just but we, you know. it does happen. It's not like your instructor is like dismissing you saying, don't touch me. It's just, <laughs> We really care. We don't want you to get hurt. So we might just forget in that moment just to make sure you're okay. Yeah, yeah. And that brings up another situation too. If if you, you know, um, the, the situation of spotting to it is for safety. And, you know, if we continuously see that um, we have to keep rushing to you um, and you're not being safe on your own, then it'll be another discussion about safety and, and how we can um, revise the situation to make it better for everyone that's involved. Yes. Um, I guess I learned that there are two kinds of spotting, guidance spotting and safety. The guidance, you can tell your instructor, just guide me, tell me what to do. That's it. Or you can tell them I need a safety spot, which means, yes, hands on. I don't want to die. So, I mean, a little tidbit if you want to know about that. <laughs> <laughs> right. Like I went through um, 
like probably about a year like after i was injured i came back to pole and i like really just wanted to do everything on my own i was like please don't don't touch me don't do anything um just leave me alone <laughs> but now i'm like please please take hold of my hips guide them in the circle <laughs> make sure that i don't die so you know like i said your consent might change you know even during the course of the the class but it's always up to you you're in charge of your own pole destiny um, as long as everyone is keeping safety in mind. Um, I could talk about a little bit more about instructors, um, the roles of the instructor, and uh, maybe students who want to give corrections to other students in class. Cool. I, I, yeah. um, I also wanted to talk about learning styles. Mm. Uh, instructors. Yeah the count of different learning styles especially when it comes to safety <laughs> yeah yeah do you want to start on that one sure um so now we're going to get into um this is mostly for instructors but it's also for students and that is different learning styles and we're talking about learning styles in safety because people learn in different ways and what might seem obvious by you saying don't do this move might not be as obvious to the student for whatever reason, just because of the way they learn or they just might be so nervous they completely forget. So you wanna make sure you're adhering to visual learners. That's why we demonstrate first and then do it a second time with explanation and then a third time in consecutive if they need it. You wanna do auditory. So that second time and third time you're explaining, answering any questions using, bod, um, using correct language as appropriate. So like chest rather than boobs or breasts, you're growing rather than vagina or penis, things like that. Um, read and write. Um, I actually have encountered a couple of students like this. Uh, they learn best by reading and writing. So you can show them as many times as you want. You can spot them and guide their body as many times as you want or need, and they're just not going to get it until you take out something that they can read and write. And what I found helps with me is taking out the poll Bible or some poll guides that we have at the studio. And then for some reason, it just clicks. I don't know why, but if you're having issues with students and safety and getting things done, that could be it. Maybe they just need to read and write it. And then there's the kinesthetic learners, which are people who need to try it, who are like, yeah, put my body the way it's supposed to, because I don't know how to do it. They're the ones who learn by actually doing it. So definitely take in account these different learning styles, especially when it comes to safety, because you might just think the students being a jackass, not listening, and that could be completely not the case. It could just be, for some reason, they're not getting it as if they were if you did it in a different way. Um, is there anything else you want to add on that, Mandy? Um, no, I love that you said the different, you know, the ways that people learn because there are so many and you, you actually reminded me of a student, um, we were doing choreo and he just couldn't, he couldn't remember the sequence of events as, as you know, we tried it so many times. And then finally, he like literally sat down and wrote it all out. And then the next practice, he knew the whole thing, the entire thing. And it was like in, <laughs> I was like, wow. <laughs> so yeah, you just got to get creative with your um, teaching techniques. And if and if you know you're not getting through to a student, have another teacher try because um, you know maybe they'll have like that little golden um, tidbit of how to um, explain it in the way that that student needs. And it doesn't mean that you're inadequate as a teacher. Um, it just means that you know we're all in this together, um, as, and we were trying to learn together. <laughs> um, yeah, I think that's. Um, do you have anything else for that? For learning styles, no, I think that's it for that. Okay, now I'll get into the the corrections in class because um, this goes for um, anyone who's really enthusiastic um, about others learning in class. And I see every single class, and everyone is always, you know, so supportive of students. Um, but there comes a time when you should, uh, as a student, take the the back seat on giving instructions to other students because sometimes while the instructions that you're giving are good and valid, um, they might, you know, not be as coming from a place of education as where the instructor would give it. Um, you might be giving 
the wrong information and then the other student's going to like stick with that and then um you know their progress will be halted because of that one little thing that they were like wait i thought it was this way and then blah 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 and then you know the telephone game um so and and you know sometimes we, as students we want to be instructors and um we shouldn't really get the practice on our friends in class um if you want to be an, an instructor you know talk to your instructor about it and they'll they'll put you in the right direction for that training and you know you can start um once you get that training you can start shadowing and then that would be when you can do that stuff um but yeah it's never really a good idea to um you know, even if the teacher is not looking um, and you think you're being helpful, you can be like, hey, I think, you know, so and so you should take a, a moment and wait for the teacher to come back so that he can give you some sort of cue for that, that will help. And that will be more helpful rather than to be in like, you should put your leg over here and then blah, blah, blah. Well, I think what happens with that is students forget all our body types are different. So what might work for you is not going to work for someone else. And that's where it's the instructor's job to come in and find out where the problem points are based on their body and see what hurts. So yes, students, thank you for your help. But just say on that side, we don't, we, we don't need it. We love that you're learning, but we don't need it. All right. Plus like on the student standpoint too like let's say you're a student and you keep fucking up and then you have this other student being going like hey you should put your blah 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 you'd be like please leave me alone like i'm just trying to like fucking pull here like mind your own business so like it could be like that too <laughs> i have i it's so funny because i have had students say like is this person teaching the class nope they're just very helpful <laughs> <laughs> love it <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah, things, things that happen. Um, what else did I want to say about instructions? Oh, um, a, a thing that's always, you know, uh, safety of the students in your class and um, posting photos and videos online. Um, you should always make sure that you have consent of the people that are in the background of your photos and videos. Um, you know, even if they're doing like sp something spectacular behind you, they might be like, hiding their pole dancing from you know the public and they don't want you to be in the background of their videos or their your photos um you know so just be respectful of that there's easy ways to blur um out the people in the background or you know put little funny icons over them so that you can protect their identity and if you ever have a question about it or if you want to like feature someone like it doesn't hurt to just ask them and be like hey can i post this of you or you know, you're in the background of this, is this okay? Um, usually, you know, people will be pretty happy to communicate their, um, what they want and what they don't want. And um, and try to remember what people say to you. So um, in the future, you don't just accidentally like, post something. And if you do, you know, make sure you just take it down as soon as you can and apologize and just try to do better. Um, yeah, I think that's all I have to say about that. I'm glad you said that because as a teacher, it's so hard. We try to promote our classes and sometimes we forget to ask, is it okay? Um, I know I maybe forgot once or twice. It just happens. You're in the hustle bus when you're like, I want to record. Um, so if you do accidentally record, like Mandy said, just after make sure you, is this okay if I post or can we just use it for the studio? Things like that. And then what I've also found is some students one day might say yes, and then another day they might say no. And even in the same class, one student might say yes, and then for some reason, by the end of the class, they're like, no. So it really can change based on the person. It sucks, but it does happen. So we just have to be mindful. So I am glad you brought that up. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, the consent, <laughs> consent and communication our safety <laughs> and then uh, another thing about um in studio pole safety is we all know um you shouldn't have any jewelry um on that can get you know mess up the poles or you know get caught on the poles and another thing i wanted to just talk about is shoelaces um and things that like are hanging off of clothes like sometimes um you know your shoelaces can get stuck together um they can get stuck on your heels they can get stuck on your hair um, you know, just be mindful and um, keep safety in mind when you um, get your outfits on <laughs> and figure out what you're going to wear on the pole. Um, and, you know, like you like for some some things I can have my laces out and everything. Um, but if I'm flipping upside down and I'm going to be like, 
crossing my legs a lot. I don't want my laces like flapping around. Um, they'll get stuck together. <laughs> Chris, do you have anything to add about that? Uh, about the jewelry? No necklaces, no rings, no earrings. Oh, acrylic nails. I know they are gorgeous. Believe me, girl, boy, all of y'all, I love them. But as I advance, I can no longer do them. It makes me want to cry. <laughs> I know, I always think about that too. <laughs> I feel like we all come in with nails and then we're like, no. Yes, you can get them, but they can't be long. Like they have to really be finger because they will get ripped out and it fucking hurts. I have gotten a fresh pair and gotten them ripped out that same week just because they were too long so i did want to bring that up with acrylic nails and pole dancing as you advance be prepared to have to shorten them or eventually just take them off it sucks but it is the reality <laughs> yeah so that was a few things that you should not have <laughs> or think about not having and then some things you you should have are um like knee pads so if you are you know like me and you have crappy knees um, even when the, the teacher says no knee pads, like I'll bring my knee pads because if I'm going to be on my knees, I want to protect my knees for the next day. Um, yeah, and if you have like really sensitive hands too, like we talked about hand grips before, but like if nothing's happening for you and, and you have really sensitive hands and they just keep getting um, ripped open by the pole, get the pole gloves, like have some sort of safety um, grip on your hands. Um, yeah, I think there's probably some other uh safety things you can wear while you are pulling like the kt tape that stays on pretty good um and it keeps your muscles you know um <laughs> i can't think of the word knowing what is happening like it keeps them stimulated that's what it is um to help you on the pole rather than wearing like uh, a leg brace or something like that you know the kt tape some other things for safety I guess that leads into injuries. Also, no lotion before your pole class. No lotion. <laughs> no lotion. Things to not wear. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, you so we, we talk about, um, oh, I just, wait, sorry, I looked at my notes about teachers. Um, we talked about teachers should be certified. Teachers should um, continue their education. Teachers should be familiar with all body types, um, like hypermobility, and have available modifications. Mm -hmm. um, and also, teachers should be honest with what you know and what you don't know, and be open to changing your methods as we all grow and learn. Um, yeah, if a, a student has a question and I don't know right away, I try really hard not to be like, well, it could be blah, 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 because like, I don't know. I'm not a doctor, um, you know, like sometimes I'll get medical questions. I have no idea. I'm not gonna like make it up. But if I've known like the medical advice from the past or something, I'll, you know, say it, but I'll always say, you know, it's your own body, um, you know, get it checked out um, if you have an injury rather than me trying to assess what's wrong with your body. Oh yeah, what is um, the scope of your profession? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> And then I guess, um, you know, if you are teaching in a studio, your studio will, will likely have a waiver. But let's say you're, you're an instructor and you're teaching online, um, a, a waiver and insurance. So if you're an instructor teaching online, you need to make sure that you develop a good solid waiver to protect your practice. Um, and it, it needs to cover all of the things that could happen online with your student and their equipment. Um, or not cover it, but like remind them that they're, you know, in charge of their own equipment. And um, you need to have your own instructor's insurance um, and it should cover your online instructions if that's what you're doing and make sure that it does. Yeah. Yeah. That waiver oh. is and online insurance at home too. You need that insurance even if you're teaching online from home. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think that's all I had about safety for studios and instructors and students in the studio. I do have one more thing for um, studios. Um, I did learn if you don't do a waiver, that is on you, you should have a PAR-Q form or some kind of health assessment 
um, that includes very, uh, very detailed questions about their health risk and depending on what their answers are, requires them to get doctor's approval. If for some reason you don't want to do that waiver, I do know that that is an option. You could do your PARQ form or your health assessment form, which requires a doctor's recommendation. And another thing with studio, have your accident forms just in case. <laughs> just in case. Always have your accident forms and fill it out just in case. Even if they, it's a light fall, just cover your ass because that light fall can come back a year later and, oh, it ain't light anymore. Let me see if I could get some money, which is bullshit, but it happens. So have that accident for her. <laughs> That's so true. And I hate to say that, but like, it's business and not personal, you guys. Like, in the studio, we're all friends and everything, but like, who's to say? you know, down the line and you didn't protect yourself and that one friend student is now not so happy with you um, and they're just trying to be a douche. <laughs> um, yeah, just make sure you protect yourself, especially if you are an independent instructor teaching only online because um, you won't have the protection of your the studio and everyone to back you up um, as far as that goes. Yeah, and then, I mean, like, we could touch a little bit about the weight limits on poles, which there are none. Um, poles are for everyone in studios. Um, there's no weight limits, please. Everyone, please come into the studio and pull. Um, as far as the home poles. I'm so glad because <laughs> I just saw a post by Roz the Diva where a student was asking her because they wanted to go to a studio and the studio, and I guess the student was 300 and the studio told them no. And she and the student was sharing this with Raza Diva, and she made a post about it, saying, "Why do we have weight limits as, on studio poles?" And it's so true. Like that person was told no just because they're three hundred pounds, and that's not fair at all. Yeah, let me let me say a little bit about that too, because the um, if their poles can only hold three hundred pounds, then they really shouldn't be having um, anyone use them, because when we pull. A hundred pound person can generate up to 1,000 pounds of horizontal pressure on the pole. So if your pole can't stand that much, then you shouldn't um, be having anyone really use it. Um, yeah, in a studio sense for, for multiple people. But like the home poles are going to be a little bit different and also stage poles are a little different as well. I know the mountain ones in studio should have no weight limit. They might have a height limit, but no weight limit, depending on the state. The home poles, when they're not mounted, I know there is unfortunately a weight limit. With that being said, uh, depending on which one you get, the home pole weight limit can range between 200 and 300 pounds. With that being said, I have done static double tricks on this one with my partner. Not crazy things, but I'm about 180, my partner's about 130, 140, which comes out to about 300 pounds. And it's held me. So there's... Yeah, they're designed to, to hold um, controlled pressure. So as long as you're doing it in a controlled way, you're not flailing yourself onto it, like kicking up into an invert, <laughs> um, you'll, you'll be fine in, in those aspects, yeah. But the stage poles, I guess, um, they have a 600 pound weight limit. And that again is, you know, the, the dynamic, or um, sorry, the horizontal pounds of pressure rather than just like, they can't hold like a 600 pound, you know, person on there. Cause they definitely could. It's just that when you start moving the, the, you know, it's like, you don't want someone to take a running leap onto that pole and hold on for dear life which I've definitely seen people try to do and it's so terrifying. Like that's what's gonna knock over that pole. <laughs> yeah, I actually haven't seen any videos on YouTube um, knocking on wood of stage poles falling over. Um, have you? I have. You have? Yes. So it, it does happen. <laughs> yeah. It does happen guys, don't try it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I've seen them fall over and I've seen them snap, which is, I don't know how the fuck that happened, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And my little bitty knowledge about, um, you know, the pounds of pressure came from um, 
I took two seminars in aerial rigging maybe like seven years ago. So I'm sure things have been updated by then. But I do remember we did an experiment with it. Like, let's say you had a hundred pound aerialist and they were doing their performance and they could generate basically up to a thousand pounds of pressure during their performance doing dynamic moves. So just something to think about. It puts things into perspective. That's incredible. Right. <laughs> That's, um, the only other things I have to talk about are um, safety for your body. Yes. You <laughs> for that, I think that's it for studio safety. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, do you want to start talking about body safety? or You can bring us into it. Okay. Um, I guess the, the biggest motto that um, our studio <laughs> has is rest is practice. Um, and it's uh, it's definitely a practice because all of us love pole so much that we just want to do it every day, every night. Um, you know, we want to learn all the new things, and sometimes our bodies can handle it, and we can we can really go for it. But sometimes our bodies are not feeling it, and then we still go to pole and we still push it, and those are the times when we can get injured. So um, taking lots of time to rest and and recuperate is a practice, and you need to incorporate it into your pole practice. And taking the time off actually is good for your body because it helps see your body to, um, like when you build your muscles, you're tearing them up. So when you rest, you give them a chance to repair and they grow back stronger. And um, yeah, you know, just taking time off uh, is a good thing. <laughs> it's hard to do, it's the worst thing. So very hard, but it's so very important. I know I forget all the time and I regret it because you could actually diminish your progress, which sucks, <laughs> but it really does happen. Yeah. And um, like even when you're, you know, if you're competing, you know, you have to think about your, your pole practice training to you. Maybe you should lessen the, your class load, you know, and think more about, um, especially if you're, if you're competing, because you're doing the same thing over and over again, you're going to get those repetitive motion injuries. So thinking about cross training in a different way to help balance your muscles will be really helpful during times when you're competing. And I guess also when you're just regular pole training too, train both sides and do some cross training. Um, I know for me, I like to go to the gym and I don't like to lift heavy weights. I love to go to the gym and just like feel my muscles and identify them and like think about them. Um, I have a hypermobile body, so uh, my whole pole practice really responds well to um, identifying muscles and being mindful when I use them. Um, so I like doing that. Uh, yeah, cross training, Pilates, yoga. Um, what are some other things, Chris? Uh, lately, I've been working on calisthenics, which is still using my body intensely, but it's just like pull-ups or like I have the dip bars and push-ups and different things like that. So um, I just actually started using the cross training. Like when I trained for PSO, I did not and it sucked. And now I'm starting to see my body change faster and differently. Um, it's definitely more tired as I train for world pole, but it definitely does help with the cross training more than I would have thought. And I had to first implement it to see it. <laughs> oh. Right. Yeah. I think I'm sorry. I couldn't unmute myself. <laughs> yeah. 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 I didn't really think about cross training either, but after I was injured, I found my body had so many imbalances just because of my bad habits um, that mostly probably came from my hypermobility and the fact that I liked to show off my flexibility and not in the most safest ways. So cross training with the, um, you know, being mindful about my muscles really changed my practice and it intensified my practice because now I could call upon my muscles and they were there for me rather than me just, you know, hoping for the best. Um, yeah. <laughs> and then I don't, like I said, I'm not a doctor. Um, but you know, uh, the advice that I've been giving from the healthcare professionals when it comes to healing from injuries is, you know, rest is going to be the best thing for sure. But if you have any soft tissue injuries, like a muscle strain or a tendon strain or anything like that, um, you want to keep an active rest. 
which means you want to continue like gentle range of motion. You don't want to just like fully stop moving because um, then your muscles and your joints will get stiff and then it'll be harder for you to get back to normal when you are um, ready to go back into training. And then, you know, obviously if you break a bone, no, don't, you don't want to move that thing. Um, but, you know, first and foremost, get that doctor's opinion um, as to what has happened to you if you are injured. Don't just let it go and hope it will go away. Um, you know, even if it's just a small little injury, it could turn into something big later. And as long as you are mindful in your, you know, recovery process and you are patient and remember that rest is practice, <laughs> you'll come back um, better than better than ever. Anything else for body? There's a couple of things I have, but I didn't know if you have any more. No, I'm actually like all done with all of my things. Hey, so for body, <laughs> a couple more. The first thing is it is so important to learn and master the basic moves before you move on to advanced ones. This is a huge part of safety. A lot of times we want to move fast and we don't even master our basic dip or our basic spin of sorts. Um, and this is an issue. Um, I know me personally, when I started, I was not engaging my shoulders properly when it came to like spins. And now my right shoulder kills me. Um, so definitely master the basics. I found now that I'm training for world pole, I've gone back to the basics and it's very different, very humbling. <laughs> it's amazing how much you forget when you don't use it. But it's something I probably should have started with. It's something I should have done. So now I'm telling y'all, start with the basics before we move on. Um, also, economy of motion, I learned, is so important. Using your energy wisely, which includes proper breathing, proper pull and push when needed. Um, just using your energy and body efficiently rather than crazily. Um, so, for example, when you're inverted, um, tighten your core, inhale, and then exhale and lift rather than inhale, jump into it, and yeah, it's a, it's a shit show. Like, really control your motions, your movement, or as I learned it, the economy of motion. Um, and you'll find that it'll help you save your energy and be able to perform even cooler combos. Another thing is body alignment. A lot of us start moves with, um, and we're so excited and we're like, yes, I could do it. Not knowing we're really not doing it correctly with our body aligned. So this is so important. It touches back on learning the basics. Like you really want to know proper body alignment. Like if you're holding on to the pole like this, your shoulders should be engaged, pulled back, your lats engaged. I'm hypermobile, so I have a slight bend in my elbows, different things like that. So body alignment is crucial. If not, you will disalign your body and it's going to suck. You might end up like, uh, like that or something, <laughs> like you never know. And also, points of contact. It is so important as instructors and as students that instructors, we teach the points of contact or moves. And as students, we learn and really work hard on those points of context. Um, it sucks. Give me a second. Three dogs from home. <laughs> so it um so points of contact is crucial it is main points of how we stay on the pole where we hook with our knees or our elbows and if we're not doing them correctly we can really slide or hurt ourselves if we're not engaging correctly a lot of different things so definitely teaching those points of context and definitely learning them while we're learning and mastering those basic skills and body alignment um is there anything else um Fucking stretch, stretch, stretch. Five, ten minutes every day. Nothing crazy. It doesn't have to be a full yoga session, but stretch every day. And when you pull, warm up. You should warm up. If you don't warm up, you've already set yourself up for failure, and you're going to hate it. All my students that 
walk in late, I tell them you need to warm up and they can feel if they don't give themselves the proper warm up because at the end of class, they're like, yeah, I should have fucking warmed up better. Like, well, we told you <laughs> it happens. That's why we say stay on the side and warm yourself up. Um, in a cool right, I'm, I'm glad you, you said that too. Cause if you don't warm up, um, you know, chances are, like you said, you're going to injure yourself. Um, when you do the things in class, because the warm up is preparing you for for what you're learning in class, and if you um, don't know what you're doing for your warm up, like let's say you're a brand new student and the teacher's like, go, you know, warm up. We have a little thing um, in our warm up room that kind of guides you through okay. a warm up, but like you know, sometimes you know, you'd be like, I don't know, what should I do for this warm up? And you know, so getting to class on time and not missing that warm up is really important for safety. Yes. And the and stretching too. I was so happy you said that. <laughs> okay. And then cool down. Um, not every class will include a cool down because sometimes classes run over and it happens. It should be included. It's a way to bring our body temperature and our heart rate down and to relax our muscles and stretch them after a good workout. But as an instructor, I do understand sometimes the class goes over and we can't keep them longer. But try to include at least two, three minute cool down. It's so very important. And it's also crucial for safety, too. Um, anything else on body safety? <laughs> um, yeah, I guess if you, you know, everyone's body is different. Um, and what I like to always stress is like, well, we're always trying to make the pretty shapes. It's not always about how you're looking. It's really about how you feel um, while you're doing it. Because if it feels terrible and awful, um, mm -hmm. please speak up. Because we can probably find, you know, maybe just one little point of contact that's off. Or you might need a full modification um, depending on your own personal body. And uh, it doesn't mean that you can't do the trick. It just means that it needs to be just a little bit different. And as long as, you know, like the whole safety is in mind. <laughs> your whole, like one move has like five or six different variations just by grip positioning or body positioning so you might not be able to do the move this way because of your body type or flexibility but with this regression or progression you can do it this way it's really weird how our bodies work i know i've been i've taught classes where i'll have an easy trick and some students can get it, some students can't. And then when I teach the progression, which is supposed to be harder, the students that can't get the easy one get the harder one, and the students that got the easy one can't get the harder one. It's just how it works. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And, and also, like, staying and working within your level. Like, let's say you are you want to do the Bird of Paradise, um, <laughs> and you've never had any dance or gymnastics training, and you try to, like, squeeze yourself into this thing. Um, you know, I feel not bad the for best you. idea, <laughs> not the best idea. Um, lots of these moves are a journey and they take many polars years, um, to achieve. And that's why they're so coveted, but, <laughs> but, you know, there's ways you can safely get into it. Um, you know, yeah, there's ways you can safely get into these moves. Yeah. I guess that's, that's it. I know we talked about a lot, so much safety. Of course, this isn't it. We've we've definitely missed some things. I just can't think of them now. So you know, uh, as this episode airs, if you have any questions or suggestions of safety, and we really didn't talk about um, something that we should have. Yeah, yeah, something. <laughs> no, and, we could have like another. Yes. What is it? Please let us know and we'll definitely make another episode, y'all. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and if any of these, like, you wanted us to break into any deeper, we could definitely, like, do, uh, you know, an episode on, you know, like, creating a safe space or something like that, um, which I think would be a good episode to have as well. Yes. Um, which brings me up to some upcoming things. So y'all know we are listening and answering your questions. We did this <laughs> one based on questions we received on Instagram for safety at home in studio and teaching. We will be touching on um, confidence building and sharing um, our poll journey, different ways to do that. Yeah, we, I just want to let y'all know we heard and we agree with you and it's coming. 
Um, we also are, we heard about different poll certificate. We heard the question about different ways to get certified in poll. And we are working on that, a list of different certifications you could take in person or online. And that is an episode coming out. Um, I just wanted to take that moment and announce that because it is so y'all know that we're listening and we're hearing and it's coming. Um, <laughs> Yes, some cool things coming up. So exciting. So this month, if you haven't already, sign up for our 28-day pole dance challenge. It's never too late. You're going to get a nice calendar and you have 28 days to try each move. Tag us each day if you want. If you can't get the move, that's okay. Just tag us of you training it. Um, it gets um, it starts easy and then progresses to harder by the 28th day. Um, but have fun with that. We also have our full paid ebook coming out um, this month in February and an interactive pole dance poster. So stay tuned for that. So many good things coming. We, I mean, I'm pretty sure you're all going to love it. I hope so. Thank you for all your support. Is there anything else you want to add, Mandy? Um, no, I think, I think that was it. Yeah, I guess yeah. The, the, the bottom line is just be safe. It's not hard yeah. to be safe. You yes. just have to, you know, and, and don't let the safety keep you from doing, you know, think don't, don't be scared because <laughs> there's ways you can be safe. Um, and it's good to do things that scare you yes. every day. <laughs> and pole could be one of them. <laughs> Another thing, me and Mandy are performing um, at the Pearl Circus, which should be airing around the week that this airs. So uh, that link will be in the bottom if y'all want to watch our performance. Uh, go out and support us. I forgot about that. Yes, uh, that's a virtual showcase, so you don't have to go anywhere. Um, but definitely support Whole Circus. Beautiful, beautiful dancer. I love what she does. And we have an interview coming with her, sneak preview. Um, but if you want to watch me and Mandy perform, that is coming out sometime this week. So you can find that link in the bottom. Yeah, yeah. And I guess another um, uh, competition is the Pull for Justice. Yeah. <laughs> I'm repping them today. They have um, all-inclusive, um, I guess, it is it showcases or competitions? I'll have to look it up. Um, but they just started them back up again. So I'll have to look up more information and get that for you guys. Um, but there's lots of opportunities for pullers, um, both online and in person. Um, so it's exciting. Everything's starting back up, um, you know, after the COVID times. Uh, yeah. we're all learning to adapt. Yes, <laughs> and if you need an online class because of COVID, check that link in the bottom. We have online. And if you don't want to take a class with us, that's okay, because we have other amazing instructors at the Pole in the Wall that you will love. We have instructors that teach ballet, uh, no pole dance, and different things like that. So give it a shot. Check out the link. you find something interesting. I've told a bunch <laughs> of people about our classes, and they're like, what the hell? Our studio doesn't have these classes. I'm going to have to check them out. I'm still huh. waiting for you to sign up. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, I love it so much. But no no pressure. I was like no always pressure. pressuring people, come dance with me. <laughs> I know. I wish poetry could right. be everywhere for everyone. I guess if you buy a home, poet can be. <laughs> That's true, yeah. And like we're we're all just in it to, you know, educate the world about how fun poll is and you know, um just like our other um episode about the different types of poll. You can make it your own and do whatever you want, as long as you are safe. You could be the next pole star just by whatever. I'm slowly figuring out my style ranges in a bit of sexy and Latin music, so I'm slowly getting into that. Love it. <laughs> uh, yeah, thank you so much for tuning in, everyone. This was fun. Do you have anything else? Yes, no, this is awesome. I'm glad we had this episode. It was one of the hot topics um, I know on on the internet. Um, and it should always be a hot topic. Yes, yeah. facts. We will have that list of different maths that you can try in the bottom and things like that. Um, also, the ghetto fied list that I <laughs> use. Because, yeah. you know, safety first, even if cash isn't available. <laughs> right? Like, yeah, making poll accessible for everyone in creative ways <laughs> <laughs> awesome so i'm chris rivers and i'm mandy mack and we, we are, are 
on the car, and we are starting off. We don't look out for pajama. I have pajamas on too. <laughs> I love it. Love y'all. Thank you for tuning in. Until next time. All righty. Okay.